Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and return with having. What I find marvelous about the neighborhood in which I'm currently residing or staying or waiting in for my love to come to pick me up is how amazingly improper employees have been. Not only have they been taintable in terms of their willingness to sort of lie, steal, and cheat from their company, not for me, but for other people that I've observed, that openly I'm not sure what to say to them sometimes. Because in my lifetime, I never thought that I'd be impoverished. I never thought that I'd be living through homelessness, but apparently that's okay with my family of origin. Because when I was getting helped, one of the bitches of my family of origin kept walking in and out of my house, which made it okay for other people in my neighborhood to think they could do that. As a result, much of my personal property was abused, edited, and completely reused by people that had no rights to it. When I speak the truth of what my cameras picked up, it's marvelous to know that someone knew how to walk fast enough by my trail cameras because I either foolishly mentioned it to them or one of my siblings told them that they were there. At the same time, trail cameras do have a sound that click when the shutter goes instead of a soft shutter. The presumption is that a trail camera is only used for capturing deer, which is not true. A trail camera can be used by a company or a family homeowner in order to capture people approaching the house. I also had ping door chimes and other things that someone monkeyed with in my home. When I removed those from my apartment complex where I was moving out of, somebody totally ruined them in my storage unit. I'd like to know who was the person walking in and out of my Fisher's U store, it, store unit because someone in the political realm has asked me to give more details of my situation, I have done so. But what I know about our climate today and the technological advancements of the day is that we do have people who are incredibly immoral that will put their hands in someone's back pocket, front pocket, or baggage to try to determine what's going on for someone instead of using marvelous social skills that were assigned to them by the military or, of course, by their incredible wisdom in business of how to ascertain information. Now, clearly, I'm being a little bit facetious, but what I see the most today is an immoralness and an improper ability of employees today. On the one hand, if they're having theft and property damage and violence going on unexpectedly in a store, then I understand the need to call police. But if they are simply trying to move someone out of their store so that they're not observed doing their illegal behavior, that's another thing entirely. What we do know about managers is they tend to hire people that make them feel good or feel smart or feel informed. At the same time, we have other managers who like to hire people who are smarter than them so it makes them look better and look good. In the final category, we have undereducated highly immoral and highly emotional managers and supervisors that try to hire people that will make them look really good, meaning they are taintable. Meaning if an employee is caught thieving, if an employer is, employee is seen doing it, the person may just say, hey, not my problem, company's problem. I am merely an employee and this is my job right here in the box lines of my employee uh, responsibilities chart or what we call a duties chart, or what we might call a job description. In other words, other duties assigned may not be really assigned. You see, there is a lot of improper behavior that goes on in a community by retail employees who are working from the point of actual poverty and that they don't make enough living because they're not full-time employees and they might make 10 or $11 an hour, but that really means their take-home pay after taxes which is typically a good 30% of most people, 25%, 20% sometimes, based on whatever tax bracket they chose, means that they're still only making roughly 8 or $9 an hour. That's not really enough to live on. It's usually at the poverty line, 
and more importantly to the situation and predicaments of our communities, they're usually partnered with someone who's not perfectly partnered for them. You see, the partner in our life should be challenging us intellectually. The partner in our life should be pushing on us gently, emotionally, just to be better, to be more aligned with God. And a partner in our life should be striving to understand the Lord's house because eventually all of us go back to God. 